When I was growing up, the idea of home ownership was that you grew up and you bought a house. It was part of becoming an adult. It's, it's really my generation, I think, that had to confront this notion that not everybody's a homeowner. And the situation with affordable housing in Vancouver is terrifying. Yeah, I'm Stephanie Rose. I was living in my apartment, which I'd lived in for many, many years. And then I lost my job. I worked at the lumber company. My rent was going up by leaps and bounds with no consideration of the fact that I had lost my job. And also because of my vision, I couldn't go out and make the money that I'd made before. So it was a situation of, you know, sort of got to do something. You know, we, we don't know how close we are to just a number of things going wrong things that are unthinkable happening in our lives that ends us up in the street. None of us are invulnerable to that. We don't really have a, a national housing strategy, whereas other countries do. They recognize that you know, a safe, affordable, secure housing is a cornerstone for, for anybody able to, to move forward on their lives, you know, to actually be able to do a, a lot of other things. I mean, there's right now studies that are showing um, if people are homeless and have multiple barriers, if they actually have a home, they will do better than those who don't. Right now, uh, we are one of the only countries in, in the more developed world that does not have a housing strategy. And we used to be a leader in housing. We had a very innovative program called the Cooperative Housing Program, and, um, and that was stopped. In 1986, Expo, I saw that they were doing co-op housing. So I wrote a letter and I explained that I would like to be in the co-op. In a co-op, you don't own the home that you live in. You're a member who owns a share in, in the association that owns all of the homes. So in, in a sense, in a co-op, you're, you're both the landlord and the tenant. Okay. I didn't hear for quite a while, and so then I wrote again. And, and I kept writing, kept writing, because I know there's a waiting list. And then what you paid in your payments was based on your income. So that lower income people would be paying a third of their income on rent. And higher income people would also be paying a third of their income on rent. At that time, Canada really led the way in looking at multi-income housing. But after four years of waiting, I got the phone call. And I had the interview. And then I got called to say that somebody else had taken it. And so I thought, oh, I'll probably never get in. After the Second World War, there wasn't enough rental housing being built. Housing that was being built was not affordable. And the cooperative movement uh, said to the government, if you're going to invest government money in, in the production of, of affordable housing, you don't want to invest in housing that can become privately owned and then flipped for a profit because then the government's invested is, is in effect wasted. So the cooperative movement said, we'll build you a, a few demonstration projects across the country. And they were so successful that the government then launched the first federal uh, co-op housing program. From 1973 until 1992, uh, co-op housing programs produced uh, more than 90,000 co-op homes across the country. The following October, I got another phone call and I was very fortunate. I was offered an apartment and I took it. And I've been here ever since and that was in November 1st, 2006. So I put in a new floor and changed the lighting and it's my home. Many of the co-ops that are, are built and operating today are reaching the end of their useful life in terms of the building. Co-ops have always been known to be mixed income communities. People who can't afford the full housing charge in a co-op have received uh, some form of government assistance to help bridge the gap between what they can afford and the full charge in, in the co-op. 
those subsidies end when the operating agreements end. Which in the year 2020, so seven years from now, 50% of the co-ops will be out of their operating agreements. 55,000 uh, households in Canada will be living in co-ops where that subsidy is no longer available. It's just not clear uh, what their situation is going to be. It's just unacceptable that um, families could uh, see their, their housing become unaffordable uh, overnight. The provincial government is going to have to make an investment in, in the affordability of housing for its citizens. Uh, building new homes is very expensive. Subsidizing private landlords uh, to provide affordable rental accommodation uh, isn't that effective because landlords simply raise the rent. Co-ops are, are a model of, of housing governance and management that already exists. They have no incentive to raise the cost of their housing beyond the, the break-even uh, operation. Traditionally, actually, it has been really the affordable housing for people who can't afford a mortgage or buy into the housing market, but who want more stability than renting or subletting a condo in downtown. So it's kind of that middle ground for kind of the working class, the middle class, people starting off. You know, it might not be great for students, but people look at this as kind of a, a great place to raise a family. And the government doesn't have to hire a single employee uh, to manage that housing because co-ops take care of their own uh, management. Which you don't do when you're renting. You know, everybody does it for you. But here, we're, we're self-sufficient. So co-op housing is the most cost-effective means for government to deliver affordable housing for its citizens. Co-ops operate on, on a not-for-profit basis. They make housing available at cost. And at the same time, aside from the financial benefit that gets delivered to, to government, co-ops also build uh, citizenship because they create communities of people who are concerned not just for their own accommodation, but for the broader community outside the co-op. You can live in a, an apartment block with a community around it and never meet anybody. But I think in the co-op, eventually you meet everybody. We have a community garden on our roof that people who want to garden can help grow the vegetables. And um, for parents with kids and young families, they have story times. It's a real neighborhood feel that you don't always get when you're renting. And that would be our argument to the province. You know, we know that there are lots of glass towers in this city where the real estate might be very expensive, but at a community level, the space is impoverished because nobody knows anybody. A co-op is a small village. Yeah, 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 it's a village. You know, what makes a co-op actually work is people who believe in cooperative living. You're all working together. It's very rich at a community level. It's been very interesting for the kids who've grown up because, you know, they've got 40 parents. <laughs> kids have grown up in the co-op because the co-op's 27, 28 years old now. They've left, gone out into the world, gone, God, I hate the co-op because it's where they grew up. But they've come back and they've gone. I had no idea what the world was like out there. I want to come back here and live. <laughs>